finally here at Islands of Adventure to do the part two of the Easter eggs of Islands of Adventure. I've spent many months researching, speaking to other team members, buying some books, and trying to find all of the Easter eggs I possibly could. Plus, I've been trying my very best to make sure that what I found on the internet was accurate. So, I've been a little worried about making this video because I don't want to tell you guys information that turns out to be false. So, here we go. This is, to the best of my ability, all of this is true. Of course, is known as Islands of Adventure, but it originally was going to be called Cartoon World. Well, that was until Jurassic Park opened and was a massive hit. And the plans changed a little bit for the name. You probably know that the resort is called Universal Orlando, but in 1999, when City Walk and Islands of Adventure opened, it was called Universal Studios Escape, meaning escape your ordinary life. But many people didn't realize that it was a whole new theme park and not just an add-on. So the name was changed. And we're going to start here at Islands Adventure at the lighthouse. So I want to show you the first thing, which is these lines which come out from the lighthouse. Now a lot of them just kind of go off into random directions, but you can follow this one and it takes you over to group sales. This one goes off to the sort of secret the alternate entrance over here, which is sometimes used for events, but most of the time it's closed. This one leads to package pickup. If you're not aware, if you want to buy something in the park, this isn't really an Easter egg, but something that's a good tip. If you want to buy something large in the park, you don't have to carry it around if you're not leaving right away. You can have it delivered to the front of the park, and as you can see here, this is the exit. You don't even have to re-enter the park to pick it up. This one goes all the way over to the restrooms. And I'll show you some more of them from the inside. You can follow another one all the way over here to rentals. This is for strollers, wheelchairs, and time machines. Unfortunately, the time machine is currently stuck in the sixth century. But, you know, this one takes you all the way over to the oddly named Universal Studios Islands of Adventure Trading Company. This one is a little bit longer. Follow it up this way, past this taxi, to the photo place. This is where you pick up your park photos if you had your picture taken on one of the attractions or by one of the photographers around here. Near the park exit, you'll find lockers. Now, as of December 2018, these are still the now old school lockers. And since I'm already here, all lockers will be emptied one hour before park closing. And if you can read Spanish, it says the same thing there. But the true Easter egg here is if you think your stuff won't be safe, right above the lockers there's a cannon. Yeah. Aimed towards the park. Right near the exit of Islands Adventure, right by the stroller, ECV, and wheelchair rental Closer to the return area, you'll find the recently relocated Lost and Found. Now, if you look up here, you'll, saw, you'll find, hopefully I'm saying this correctly, Codiga Tra Adventures. This is named after one of the architects of Islands of Adventure. This took me hours to find, even though I was looking in the right area. So even if you know about it, you might not know how to find it, so this is how to find it. Yeah, I don't know if it's an Easter egg, but not everybody knows about this because people kind of walk through here quickly. There are several places where you can hear people talking through here in Port of Entry. So up here you'll see a, re a reference to James, um, I'm not going to try his last name because I don't want to say it wrong, but he's this, a former senior vice president of Universal who helped with Islands of Adventure, also 
City Walk is that open the same year, and the partnership between Universal and Lowe's to open hotels, and starting with the Portofino Bay, which also opened in 1999. And over here is the Open Arms Hotel. Now this is really just guest services and first aid or health services. Over this door used to be a sign with a woman with her arms open. But for some reason it was removed. Here at the Always Christmas store, great. There are some cats trying to get into a bird cage. Usually you can hear them, but for some reason... Oh, that's interesting. There's a Bose speaker. Hmm. I haven't seen Bose anywhere else in this, in this um, resort. As you walk through Port of Entry, if you keep going straight, instead of left or right, there's this nice little area. I don't know if, if this was used for something specific. I believe it was when the park opened. I couldn't find any information because it definitely looks like they had something set up here, but I can't find specifically what, maybe a gazebo or something. But if any of you know, please leave a comment. Because I tried to do extensive research for this video, but there are just things, there are things that are almost 20 years old that information just isn't, isn't really there anymore. Over here in Port of Entry, you'll find Confisco Grill. And it's called that because there is an item taken from every single one of the islands here at Islands of Adventure. You'll find a cat and hat, hat. <laughs> I don't believe there's something for Kong yet, but Seuss Landing, there's something from Harry, from the Wizarding World of Harry Potter in up there, and quite a bit from Seuss Landing. But that is why this restaurant has its name. The garbage cans in Port of Entry used to have this theming on it. They had different stickers for different islands before they upgraded to nicer looking cans. There's Thor hiding back there. And some really old looking Christmas lights. Yep, still, um, still nothing. Oh, well, there is a pith helmet that could be for Kong, but I have a feeling it's been there. There's a lot of little details in here that aren't necessarily Easter eggs, just some nice detail that people don't notice because you, know, you just walk right through looking for a ride. Not really an Easter egg, more of a hidden thing, but if you come down here, you see a literal yellow submarine. Over here is what used to be a dock for a boat service that would that would go from four different docks in the park. Now very close to the lemon slush and the smoking area, you'll find what was the entrance exit for the island skipper, and you can see what is left of the sign. Well, it's going to show you an Easter egg right here, but they painted over it. It's used to say, it used to be an ad for Seagrooms, which was originally the owner of this park, but I guess someone decided that they didn't want to advertise for them anymore. It's too bad. When Islands of Adventure opened, Starbucks wasn't here. In fact, it wasn't until after 99 that Starbucks was on property at all. It seems that Epcot was a huge inspiration for this park. And right here in this lagoon, if you think that the fireworks are new to the lagoon in Universal Orlando, that's not correct because there used to actually be a fireworks show here in the evenings uh, in the, from the lagoon. Barges and everything. Over here by the Hulk, you'll find this area which is used for meet and greets. Not sure what the original intention was for this, and it is possible that it was always meant for meet and greets because it's not exactly new to the theme park industry, but I don't have any confirmation either way, so you can help me with all of that. I don't think I'll have enough Easter eggs to have a third version of this, but maybe a supplement? Something down in the comments? We'll see. Please comment if you have any other information. I couldn't find anything. Next up on the tour is the first island with attractions, which is Marvel Superhero Island. Now, this is originally going to be called Gotham Island, with featuring, obviously, Batman, 
and Gotham City based on the 1989 Tim Burton Batman. MCA was the owner of Universal Studios at the time, and they were working with Warner Brothers, which of course was a recurring theme because Warner Brothers worked with Universal for Wizarding World of Harry Potter, and they were trying to develop Gotham Island for what was going to be called Cartoon World. But there's a dispute between MCA and Warner Brothers over royalty, so the deal never closed and the theme park rights for DC went to Six Flags instead. Of course, later on, Marvel struck a deal with Universal because they were not doing very well financially at the time. That's why Universal was able to get away with such an incredible contract as they have right now. As long as Universal wants to keep Marvel Superhero Island and maintains it, which is why the Hulk was rebuilt recently, Universal can keep all the characters here and any characters prominently featured here cannot be in any Disney park east of the Mississippi. Pretty nice deal. Although the gift shops are decorated for Christmas, Marvel Superhero Island is one of the few places where on the outside it's not decorated for Christmas and you don't hear Christmas music. Here in Marvel Superhero Island, there is the Incredible Hulk Coaster. Which I've been told by a credible source was originally going to be the Silver Silver Surfer coaster. But being close to I-4 and the Turnpike, a highly reflective metallic roller coaster was determined to be a bad idea. The Incredible Hulk coaster entrance features these track pieces. These track pieces were part of the original track from 1999. Although the track design hasn't changed, the entire track is replaced in 2016. Here's a place where you can get an update on the crime line if you want to put this thing up to your head after who knows how many people have done so. Not very sanitary is what I'm saying, but if you want to. For all other reports, please press 5. Please continue to hold. Thank you. It's a uh, very outdated references. For those of you who are young, phones used to be all around called pay phones or public phones that look like this. Even the fake newspapers have theming. Um, newspapers used to be the way people would get news if you're young. In a similar way, Cafe 4 was going to be the Silver Surfer, or Silver Surfer's themed, but it would have been too reflective and probably annoying to people walking by too. Now the Storm Force Accelotron itself is a kind of an Easter egg unless you look at the map. It's hard to find, but I'm going to show you something that is more of an Easter egg because you don't see it unless there's a unless the extended queue is open and it and basically never is. So here is a story that you rarely get to see because this extended queue is closed most of the year. The arcade isn't really an Easter egg, but you might not know that there was a photo op up here for Doctor Doom, which for reasons I do not know, I could not find, they don't do this photo op anymore, which is too bad. If you've ever looked down and saw this and thought maybe it was theming to look like a helicopter landing pad, although with the objects nearby. It might not be possible for a helicopter to land, but it certainly would be ill-advised. This is actually a hydraulic lift to get equipment in to service the Hulk. They, they would drain this out. As you can see, there's a ramp there, there's a ramp there. So if you ever wonder what that is, and see there's a gate up there, that's what it is.
never seen a... Looks like something else is to attach there. I wish I knew what that was, but fortunately I don't. While you're visiting here, you might not have time to walk over and look at this area. I'm gonna sign up here. For Farwell's Gym. Even the street signs here have Easter eggs or meanings in based in comic books. Of course you don't have to be really into comics to understand why the main road here is Stanley Boulevard. Now this is two different things. First, Donald Blake, MD, is a reference. Also, anytime you see this vacation information, it's also a remote guest service location if you need guest services. I don't know why they don't put that on the sign. Opening soon, this is also a reference. Stark Enterprises. Osborne Industries. And while you're here, this is unfortunately a former Easter egg. If you stood here, you'd be able to hear some thugs planning out their next crime. As you can see, there's a speaker in there, but as of today anyway, it's, it's not working. You'll notice that for the most part, all the signs are generic, like store, cotton candy, arcade. This is because in comics, these names would be generic, but then they ruin that by putting a logo right under it. Over here by store, you'll find Nelson and Murdoch, attorneys at law. Not strictly an Easter egg, but it's something a lot of people don't know, is back behind store, you can meet Spider-Man, get a picture taken, and be on the cover of a comic book. Pretty cool. Still back here, if you go back this way, this is a really good path to go if you're trying to bypass the crowds and you don't feel like pushing your way through because you can see even on a busy day, it's not, there's, there's no one back here. But also, you'll see this little Easter egg for Stark Industries. Check out the different Patch in the Superhero Exchange, number 8291. Areas this where you can hear Iron recordings. Man, code 62819 for anyone at Avengers Headquarters. The energy that fuels my armor is almost depleted. If Magneto's assault continues, I will have no way to replenish my power supply. And, I fear, no way to stop his terrible threat to the city. There's different, there are different ones depending on... Uh, what it plays when you play it, push the button. Here in Marvel Superhero Island, there are many illustrations of the various characters. Now the artists were not able to put their names next to their artwork, so they came up with a clever way of putting their names on anyway. Hidden in all these illustrations is the name Adam. Here at Storm Force Accelotron, I believe that's the atom up there, but it's tricky because this used to be on this side and it was mirrored, so. The entrance for the Hulk coaster used to not be this close to Storm Force, but when it was redesigned, it was expanded, and so they thought that the sign would work better over here. Here are two of them in the row, one on the thing's foot. And one, if you look right here, this is Adam. It's right there. Outside of the arcade. Right there. Dr. Doom's Fearfall. Up here. Spider-Man! You know what that means? Adam! I mean trouble. I mean good luck. Here's Doc Ock. Drawn by Adam. There's Magneto being hit struck by lightning. This is 
first one, then his helmet flies off, and then it lands over here on the ground. So, obviously being three poses, there are three atoms. If you're like me and not a comic book nerd, this is actually Submariner, not Aquaman, like, like I thought. <laughs> and there he is, Adam. Although here is a character that is actually drawn by Max. My name is Max. Now there is an Adam down here, but it was covered up. However, here is the miniature version. There's Adam. It says, it looks like it says Joyce here. I don't know who that is. Captain America. Here's Iron Man's. The mighty Thor. Here's Electro. And over here we find another Adam. Can't quite find it on this character. Hopefully I have it uh, the video that's been from before. Right there. Finally here on the Silver Surfer. Is a fairly visible Adam. It's not much of an um, Easter egg, but you might not know in Marvel. Every hour, the superheroes arrive on vehicles, sort of motorcycles. They come through the streets, and here they come now. This, their appearance happens every 45 minutes. I'm sure it is on the guide map at the front of the park, and the app as well. If you're wondering what this is back here, this is the extended queue to the Amazing Spider-Man, which I'm pretty sure they never they never use anymore. Well, maybe they do use it sometimes. But way over there, I'm sure, is not used anymore. Pretty cool area back here. I just walked right through past the restrooms back here if you want to see it other times of the year. Wow, you know this place is old when it says diesel and unlighted. Yes, gasoline used to have lead in it. Seriously, this queue goes all the way back to here. Although when this attraction opened, it was revolutionary. And it's possible that there was this much of a line because it was, I think, equivalent to Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey as far as innovation and popularity. It's not that popular anymore. It's still a great ride though. You can see the drop-in poles aren't even in anymore. But again, if it's not open as an extended queue, it's kind of cool to just look at it because the theming is really great. I like how it says yellow, blue, and red and it also shows the codes. I don't know if there's actual codes for the colors, but still pretty cool. Over here is what I've heard from many people, the place where the meteor hit that gave the super superheroes their powers. Although I've heard variations of that. But if it's a really busy day like it is today, and you want to take a little breather, Take a break, sit down somewhere, not bump into people. And this is one of several areas in Islands of Adventure that's, it's a, well, it's loud like music-wise, but there's not a whole lot of people back here. So if you want to just take a break, there's also one over here at the Discovery Center, to Lagoon, I'll show you a little bit more about that. Behind Mythos, and this area here, behind Seuss Landing. And right over here in Port of Entry. Now, I believe one of the reasons for this is because of the former Lagoon show. This is a great place for people to stand to watch a show. Unfortunately, the show ended a long time ago and it's not going to return because of the castle projections in Hogwarts. You can also find the smoking sections back here. Not a Easter egg by itself. You might walk by this Captain America diner and not see it, but there's a few things I wanted to show you about this place that you might not know. Not sure if there are any hidden atoms in here, I would assume so, but I'm not aware of them, so 
if you are aware, again, please leave a comment in the section below. But one of the things I wanted to show you is up here, as you see, as you see Thor here, the Thor, Thor just threw his hammer towards the window. But even though this is a fairly quiet area to eat and sit and relax, of course you have air conditioning too, but there's an even quieter area where you can sit. You don't have to come in and eat, you just want to take a break from the crowds? Check this out. Right over here next to the freestyle machines, go out this door, which I'm not sure, okay. You can sit out here, get a nice view of the lagoon, and you can hear that there's almost no music whatsoever back here, so really nice quiet area. And it's shaded, of course, and fans, so it shouldn't get too hot, even in the summer. But again, if you want to just take a break, this is a great place. From here, you can see some interesting theming on the back of the building that you really can't see almost anywhere else except for the gag trail. I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. But st stairs that lead to the lagoon and some doors. Some other doors over here. Not really a Easter egg, but kind of a bonus. You can see because of the curvature here, it looks a little bit like a dining car. Across from Spider-Man, in the same area I've shown you other things, there are other communication ports similar to what I just showed you. Wow, this guy talks really slowly. Huh. When you press it on one of them, they all talk. Let's see if you can get a better one. Nope, same thing. And that's all I can find in Marvel Superhero Island. Now time for Toon Lagoon. Over here, by my favorite ride, Popeye and Bluto's Bill Dried Barges, which is quite a name, there are places where you can buy tokens and spray people as they go by this attraction. It's spray for pay. Now, you could spend money here and shoot water out of these cannons, but I'm going to show you a way to do it for free in a, mo a little bit. But. I guess nobody has any tokens. I like how they cover the pipes so it looks like a fire hose. If you're wondering, this is the price for the tokens and yes you can use credit cards and mobile payments. But make sure when you're done to press complete. Besides the ones on the bridge, there are also more blasters over here and that activates these showers over here. So you can shower people as they go by. Thanks to whoever walked away from this before they finished their uh, <laughs> amount of tokens, because I just did that for free. I came over and saw this was red and like, oh, this might actually work. Keep walking down this path to me ship the olive. Go upstairs to the second floor. And look at that, you can spray people for free. I want it. Now it's not as strong of a of a blast, but it looks like they've upgraded these because they're actually shooting pretty well. They were pretty lame for a while. And they come by. Squirty, squirty. <laughs> On the second floor, you'll find a piano with color-coded keys. And if you play this in order of the colors, You'll get treated to Popeye's theme. Kids and Purell, good combination. Up here on the third floor, there's a wheel you can turn a little bit. But when you change this,
play some sounds. On the third floor, it's a really great place to get an overview of the entire park. Including the new Potter Coaster still under construction. And the gag trail. Oh, speaking of the gag trail. Now I got a lot of, uh, this is called feedback, from missing this on the gag trail. This is Plymouth Rock, which is a double meaning because Plymouth Rock, where the pilgrims landed, and also Plymouth used to be a, a manufacturer of automobiles under the Chrysler Corporation. I don't remember, if, I think they were independent at first, but they closed down operations uh, quite a few years ago. Oh no, somebody's trapped in that boat. They're trying to get out. And next to that is a physical representation of a map in cartoons, but in the real world. And a boat that has an anchor that's way too big for the boat. There's also this sign over here. High tide, low tide, rip tide. You see it's ripped up everything here. Although it's actually ripped current, but we kind of ruined the joke. Here's a quick one right across from Blondie's in Gasoline Alley. These tires leak air. You put your hand like right here, for example, you'll feel air burst, uh, running out, rushing out of it over here too. Something I didn't even know about. I saw that in, here in Toon Lagoon, there was going to be an extra ride that some of these decorations are hiding what was going to be supports that had start they had started construction on, but the funding was cut unfortunately. So that would be the only non-water related attraction here in Toon Lagoon. This attraction is going to be a bit of a roller coaster. And in this attraction at some point there's a lookout point. And it's not like Oh, look out and see things. It's like, look out, because the rider's going to go right past it. Fortunately, it never happened. Um, it would be nice if it was put in someday, but it's going to be really difficult to shut down this part of the park because it would make it harder to get to other portions of it. But I don't know. Now that um, Comcast and Wizarding World of Harry Potter is making so much money, can't roll it out completely, I guess. Well, you're here in Toon Lagoon, you might wonder what this stage and this theater is used for. Unfortunately, nothing anymore since 2011 when um, Matt Hoffman's Agro Circus closed, which used to be right in there. There was something else before that. But, so I never got to see it, even though I was here in 2010 and 2011. I was here for Horror Nights. Hopefully someday this will get used, but it's uh, just wasted space right now. So over here at the entrance of Toon Lagoon, you'll see this speech bubble and this quote, which if you stand here long enough, will actually rotate and change. Uh, and since it takes a while, I'm just gonna cut to when it does that. Remember in 1999, that was current. Now this isn't super well hidden, but the song play, same song plays throughout this whole area of Toon Lagoon, but there are several places where characters will sing, or in this case, bark along with the music. Now, this is, a, this is a speculation, but I believe that these buoys are marking anchors that are in the lagoon. Probably related to the, as I've mentioned before, fireworks show. Another example is Hagar the Horrible. Another example is Blondie. I mean, Blondie! That's what my Blondie is. Here in Skull Island, Reign of Kong, it's an island with only one attraction. So there really isn't much to say here other than Kong used to be an attraction called Confrontation over at Universal Studios. In Jurassic Park there's some carnival type games. I'll get to how they ended up here in a little bit. This area that's blocked off by plants used to be a guest accessible area. There are rumors 
years that these are the exact same dinosaur fossils that were in the movie Jurassic Park. Being that Steven Spielberg was involved in both Jurassic Park and has been involved with Universal Orlando since the beginning, it's plausible. And they actually started designing the rides before they even shot the movie. But I've heard conflicting reports, so can't really confirm that. I believe I have mentioned this before, but all the vehicles in Jurassic Park are original vehicles from the movie. I might have mentioned that in the past, but I have confirmation now. Across from the Jurassic Park Discovery Center, you'll find some tables and a door. Now, I'm pretty sure that this used to be a guest accessible area, but once again, not sure, don't have proof. But it's an old area to sit and look at some not so nice looking water. This is a sort of an Easter egg in progress. This is a new area for airbrushing and raids. So if you're wondering what used to be over here, as you can see there's evidence of something being here before, well now you know. Why it was moved, something I don't know. This is something you're interested in. As you're exiting Jurassic Park, you can actually look up here and see some of the lights for the projection shows, nighttime lights at Hogwarts, nighttime lights at Hogwarts Castle and the magic of Christmas at Hogwarts Castle. But there was an additional attraction that was cut from the budget before this opened. Other than that, I believe I've covered everything in this island, even though it is the largest of all the islands. Well, and also that there used to be the arch here for the entrance to Jurassic Park, but it was taken out when they added this ride. That's all for Jurassic Park. Now on to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. They're flying! Here in Hogsmeade, this tower up here, every, on the hour and every 15 minutes after that, there will be an owl that will come out, just like that, and make a noise, letting you know 15 minutes has passed. Before this restaurant was built, the Three Broomsticks, when this was still Lost Continent, there was another restaurant here called the Enchanted Oak Tavern. That was completely torn down to make room for Three Broomsticks, because it looked like the base of a tree. It had a very similar menu to Three Broomsticks, according to those who I've sp spoken to. Under here by the Owl Post and the Owlry, which is a weird way, to, weird word to say, Real word, it's hard even to describe it. If you look up here, you'll see an owl that moves its feathers every once in a while. And of course, there's also a lot of fake owl poop here in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Notice it is the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, not Harry Potter Land, not Harry Potter World. And these owls will move their head every once in a while as well. So if you look up, there's a, there's a bit of movement, not much, but they do move around just a little bit. This is the Flight of the Hippogriff, a nice little coaster I like, but this was not built for the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. This used to be the Flying Unicorn when it was part of, yep, Lost Continent. This entire building, however, was new for Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Also, this tower here, there was a tower like it before. I think I might have a picture of it. It was expanded for the nighttime projection shows to hold a lot of projectors. And of course, if you are here in Islands of Adventure and you want to go to Universal, take the Cloudworks Express, you need a two-park pass. If you don't have one, you can upgrade right here. There are actually two things to show you over here on the bridge between Jurassic Park and Wizarding World of Harry Potter Hogsmeade. One is the Island Skipper boat dock, which obviously doesn't get used anymore, unfortunately. And the other thing is uh, something that may no, no longer be here when you watch this video. It is a bridge that's open only in peak times. If you ever see 
that bridge and think, how do you get there? Well, if there's nobody on it, you can't because it's not open to guests. When the last continent opened, this was the Lost City, which was Poseidon's Fury. This is an attraction that is still here, but has a different story, not as popular, and Mythos. And once you walk through this archway, you are in Sinbad's Bazaar. This is themed as an ancient Arabian marketplace, which until very recently featured the eighth voyage of Sinbad. And the third area was called Merlinwood, which I guess is a reference to Hollywood, but it sounds like something that someone might wake up to. But once the Wizarding World of Harry Potter opened, it just became the Lost Continent. The individual areas kind of lost their names. This area used to contain carnival games, which are now in Jurassic Park. This was the final area that remained from Merlinwood until, of course, the Hogwarts Express was added. Over here in Mythos, you can find a strange noise under this bridge. I was recently told because there was going to be an attraction here, a roller coaster that would go over this area and kind of wrap around Mythos and go by this side. But it was cut because of budget. When Islands of Adventure first opened, this was a drawbridge. That's why there are gates here close off, just like at the China Pavilion in Epcot. This waterway over here used to, the reason why it was a drawbridge, they brought barges out here to the lagoon for a fireworks show. Unfortunately, for reasons I'm not, aware, I'm not sure of, they stopped that fireworks show a long time ago. Too bad. I believe this is what covers the controls for the drawbridge. The drawbridge is no longer able to go up and down. It's been permanently closed because of the fact they don't do the fireworks show anymore. On the Lost Continent side, there are more gates from when, again, this used to be a drawbridge. When Disney's Animal Kingdom opened, there was going to be a, an area called Beastly Kingdom, but because of budget constraints, they decided to not open it right away and it got delayed many times. The rumor is that some of the people who were working at Beastly Kingdom who were fired from the project came to Universal and brought their plans here to Islands of Adventure when it was being developed and that is why this doesn't seem to match anything else in the park. And that's why Beast of the Kingdom will probably never be seen. A year after this park opened, Michael Eisner himself took a tour. And when he saw Lost Continent, the Lost Continent, he realized that Beastly Kingdom is not going to happen because it's going to look like Disney copied Universal, which wouldn't be the first time. Well, I really didn't want to go into Seuss Landing, especially this time of the year, but there's something I missed in the first video that I think is pretty cool that I really want to show you. So, one thing. There's something over here right by Cat in the Hat that I didn't show you. Do you see it? Right over here. From here, you'll find a stage, which sadly is just not used anymore. It'd be nice to see it go back into use someday, but I think the problem is it's too far away. But still, it'd be nice to see it used someday. Are you hungry? What are you hoping? You know that this place will never reopen. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for making it all the way to the end. This video took a lot of research and time shooting and editing, so I hope you enjoyed it. Please share it wherever you can. Comment, like, and I hope you clicked on the ad. Thank you for watching this video all the way through. And please exit through the gift shop.